You're watching Central Illinois' best source for news and weather. WAND News at 4 starts now. A weekend of violence now at 4. Two people are dead and a community grapples with how to curb the crime. The latest from Champaign County in just moments. Plus a warning from health officials as cases and hospitalizations from COVID-19 surge yet again. We're going to start with some breaking news first at 4. Multiple people have been shot at a high school in Knoxville, Tennessee, including a police officer. This is a live look at the scene right now. You can see a very large response. This is the Austin East Magnet High School. We do know that multiple people have been shot. It's unclear, though, if anyone has been arrested. We're going to continue to monitor this situation and bring you any details as soon as we get it, including a suspect information. Now to new developments in the murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. A University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana graduate took the stand today. Jonathan Rich is an advanced heart failure and transplant cardiology specialist at Bingham and Women's Hospital in Chicago. The prosecution called on him to testify on George Floyd's death. The former Urbana resident told the court George Floyd died because of the actions of the officer and not a heart condition or drug overdose like the defense has argued. Dr. Rich told the court that he came to this conclusion after reviewing medical records, the autopsy, and this video footage of Floyd's arrest. He says he believes Floyd would have lived had he been given treatment during several instances shown on the video. Now, Rich said he believes Floyd's death was preventable. The prosecution expected to rest its case this week, and then the defense will present their case. The judge says he believes closing arguments could begin on Monday. The mayor of Minneapolis has declared a state of emergency and issued a curfew beginning at 7 o'clock tonight. This follows another deadly encounter with a police officer. A protest and unrest were sparked over the weekend following a shooting 10 miles away from the Twin Cities. A police shot and killed 20-year-old Deontay Wright during a traffic stop. The police chief said the officer thought she pulled her taser but accidentally shot Wright. Our early reports was that one officer had fired a weapon, uh, striking the driver. Uh, the vehicle continued and eventually crashed. Now the Minneapolis or Minnesota National Guard has been deployed to the city of Brooklyn Center where the shooting occurred. There's no word on if that officer will face any charges. New at four, an Illinois State Police investigator charged with DUI after a deadly crash is out of jail. Robert Hodson posted a $20,000 bond today. Hodson is accused of crossing a center line on Illinois 48 Friday and hitting a car head on. Uh, two people were killed. A third is fighting to survive. If found guilty, Hodson could face up to 28 years in prison. He has a hearing scheduled for May 10th. Developing now, police in both Champaign and Urbana are searching for whoever is responsible for a number of weekend shootings. Two of them were deadly. The first shooting happened at Prairie Green Apartments Friday night. 34-year-old Eric Kirk died after being shot in the head. Then Saturday night, Champaign police say 30-year-old Aaron Jamerson was shot and killed near Neal and Vine Street. And on Sunday, Urbana police rushed to Weber Street and Fairlawn Drive, where officers believe someone shot a man while he was letting out a friend's dog. A 46-year-old was shot multiple times, including in the head. He is in the ICU at Carl Foundation Hospital with life-threatening injuries. Anyone with information about any of these shootings is asked to call police. And WAND is following the investigation for all of them. To stay up to date with the latest information, download the WAND News app. New information now in the race for Macon County Sheriff. Candidate Jim Root and Sheriff Tony Brown submitted their closing arguments and responses. Root's team said contested ballots without signatures should not be counted. Brown's team felt they should based on witness testimony from the trial. This trial stems from a years-long battle after Tony Brown was declared sheriff after winning by one vote in 2018. A full county-wide recount was conducted and over 1,300 ballots were contested in court. There is no word yet on when a final decision will be made. Correctional officers found an inmate dead in his cell. Vermilion County Coroner identified him as 43-year-old Joshua Edwards of Hoopston. The Sheriff's Department says officers found Edwards during a routine cell check on Sunday. An autopsy was scheduled for today. After a damp, dreary weekend, things are on the rise. Things are changing. We did rebound into the 60s today after a cooler weekend. Not only that, we have dried up across central Illinois as well. Abundant blue out there as we have limited to no cloud cover across central Illinois. Temperatures now, we are all in the low 60s. The further south you go, a little bit warmer, but only by a degree or two. Storm Center satellite and radar is quiet and dry now. Potentially tonight, 
may be tracking a few showers along and south of Interstate 70. Most of us now 15 degrees warmer than we were this time on your Sunday. I'll let you know how to plan out your week ahead coming up in a few. Right now, Illinois and 16 and over can receive the COVID-19 vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine is currently the only vaccine approved for 16 and 17 year olds. Governor Pritzker says vaccine appointments may be limited this week as eligibility expands, but more will be coming. And COVID-19 case rates and hospitalizations are on the rise and health officials are concerned. The Illinois Department of Public Health reports a gradual increase in hospitalizations over the past week. Health leaders say COVID-19 is still prevalent and we must prevent it from spreading. These surges in cases cause um, that strain on the healthcare system and those providers. We have to keep our frontline workers in mind so that we do not overburden them. Health leaders continue to stress the importance of wearing a mask, washing your hands, and keeping our distance while vaccines continue to be rolled out. More than 2,400 cases of COVID-19 were reported statewide in the last 24 hours. 18 more people have died. The state's test positivity rate is now at 5%. For the latest vaccine information, visit WANDTV.com. A Wallet Hub study found Illinois is the sixth most pandemic proof state for small businesses. The data set ranges from small businesses operating in highly affected industries to credit conditions and small business friendliness. The state had the highest score for accessibility and impact of resources being offered. April is National Donate Life Month. More than 4,000 Illinoisans are waiting for a life saving transplant. Every 10 minutes, another is added to the waiting list. More donors are needed. As an organ donor, uh, organ and tissue donor, you can save a person who is an organ donor can save up to five lives through organ um, donation and up to 50 lives from life-saving tissue transplants of bone, tendon, um, heart valves, uh, skin for burn victims and things of that nature. So it's extremely, extremely important you can sign up to be an organ donor at any Department of Motor Vehicle office or by texting HOPE to 51555. Improving Illinois is still ahead the new plan from the White House and how it will impact infrastructure in our state. We're watching Central Illinois' best source for news and weather. A Congress is back in session after a two-week recess and facing a bundle of hot-button issues. At the top of today's agenda, President Biden's infrastructure plan Susan McGinnis tells us about the president's meeting with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Congress back in session and hitting the ground running. A handful of lawmakers from both parties gathering at the White House to meet with President Biden to talk infrastructure. It's about investing in infrastructure and infrastructure not for the 20th century, but the 21st century. The meeting featuring lawmakers from key committees focused on infrastructure, but holding different ideas on how to fix it. Democrats say now is the time to take action on a once in a generation investment in everything from roads and bridges to housing and jobs, energy and internet, all funded with a 28% corporate tax rate. The president doesn't feel that we should pay for this package on the backs of the American people, but he's certainly eager to hear ideas. Republicans call it a job killing slush fund for liberal priorities. They're fighting for a scaled down plan and against the corporate tax hike, arguing that would undermine an economy on the threshold of a massive expansion. Democrats want to ram it through without any uh, cooperation with Republicans, without any discussion, without any compromise. President Biden has signaled he is willing to negotiate, but also willing to pass the plan with only Democratic votes. With Democrats anxious to move on to issues including education, family leave and health care, passing infrastructure could be a crucial litmus test of what the new president can do. Susan McGinnis, NBC News, Washington. Now, Democrats hope to have the infrastructure bill pass the House as soon as July. Then it faces an uphill battle in the Senate. And President Biden intends to give Illinois millions to spend on infrastructure. Under the American Jobs Act, the money could be used for road and bridge improvements to the over 8,000 in poor condition. It also includes upgrades to 21% of public transportation vehicles. It would also address the over $20 billion needed to repair water pipes for clean drinking water. The report gave Illinois a C minus for its infrastructure. Helping students with virtual learning coming up the new program that could help your child deal with learning during a pandemic. Companies are adding incentives to encourage workers to use their vacation time. One financial company says it will now offer employees 250 bucks for every week of vacation they use up to $1,000 a year. 
Unused vacation time is considered a liability and something companies generally pay if an employee leaves. A recent survey by the Harris Poll found 52% of older millennials with student debt say their loans were not worth it. The majority of older millennials are still paying down their student debt a decade or so later as well. 32% of them, though, have entirely paid off their debt. Parents dealing with virtual learning now have a new option to get some help. A former teacher created ScholarWork, a virtual world to help kids with virtual learning. Students have access to classrooms, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and some fun activities. We've shown the world they can learn online. Now we need to tweak what we're, the method we're offering it through so we can really bring that delivery of instruction up to be engaging. And here's my thing, let's jump into their world instead of pulling them into ours. Now ScholarWork offers us access in all subjects, including test prep. This is for grades three through 12. Women taking over the sneaker market, the company making strides and how it's changing who stores are marketing to. Biggest sneaker collectors, Instagram influencers, the Peter sisters, known as the chicks with the kicks, run one of the largest sneaker auctions ever. Starting to see like these women are actually spending money. Why don't we do something for them? It gives women the ability to really get involved, share their voice, express themselves through their sneakers and start collections if they want to. Now sales for shoes to women increased by 75% over the last year. And this just in, skinny jeans are out. The CEO of Levi says wide leg jeans are in high demand. He believes it's because of the pandemic and people wanting to dress more comfortably. Fashion experts say the fashion world could be in the early stages of a new denim cycle. I'm all about comfortable dress, Casey. Me too, but I just wish Santa Claus uh, maybe would have brought me the trendy jeans and not a couple pair of skinny jeans now that they're out of style. I have never worn skinny jeans in my life. I love skinny jeans. Why? Like you can wear them with boots in the winter. They're easy to wear with boots. You can't wear flare bottom jeans in the winter with boots. Yes, you can. Well, you can, but you don't. You don't wear Uggs under the jeans. <laughs> wear them on top. I have no fashion sense, so I probably would. Apparently, neither does Santa Claus. <laughs> we'll be right back. If any, maybe grab yourself a bag of popcorn. Not warm enough to pop the popcorn outside. <laughs> we'll see you back here at five.